This week's episode of One of a Kind with RVD is presented by Get Blitzed. That's get-blitz.com. Get Blitz Let's Aid is nano-infused THC syrup, and it is a premium cannabis-infused syrup formulated with nanotechnology for fast-acting effects. And you can get 15% off your order when you head to get-blitz.com and use promo code RVD. Get 15% off. Head to get... Oh, what's up? It's Sunday night. It is one of a kind with RVD. I'm Dominic D'Angelo of several outlets. But guess who is here on a Sunday night? A special night of this recording. It's... I'm going to give you a couple seconds. We'll do one, two... Hey. It, it's it's lovey lovey it's one of a kind with lovey, lovey. that's who it up? is if you guess lovey guys you get uh, i'll send you a oh my god oh. i'm sorry barbara a little scared barb got scared <laughs> you got a little scared it's lovey lovey's here though too quick lovey's too quick she wants to play fetch oh geez <laughs> Love you, let's I'm sorry, Barbara. Did I hurt your hand? Oh, she's oh, okay. He's okay. She's giving you love too, babe. Little oh, daddy would never hurt you on purpose, ever, ever. <laughs> Lovey, the, the good people want to see you. Look at Lovey. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> you guys didn't know, though. This is Rob Van Dam, and it's one of a kind with RVD. So, hello, we're live. Uh, we, we had, I had some complications on Friday. I had, uh, I, my brother was getting ready for the very first match and I was over at his place for Friday night or was playing too. And so we had to reschedule and Sunday night was the night and Rob was a busy man last week. Um, wait, so this is your brother that does the, um, the podcasting. Yeah. The Jake, the snake and, uh, and he had his first match. Had his first match. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He came out, he fought Sam Handyman at IWC in a household rules match or something like that, a handyman rules. And uh, oh. so there were some weapons used, a drywall, uh, a yardstick, a toilet seat. Well, as everyone's first match should should be, should be right? of course. Yes, yes. And uh, he lost, unfortunately. Hey, he was a little arrogant and uh, it kind of bit him. He, he, it paid him back. Ted DiBiase gave him his loaded glove that he used to have, and Marcus tried oh. to use it, but that didn't help him. That didn't. If that didn't win the match for him, probably nothing will. But no, no. So, yeah, he's got a little bit. Remember of my first match: the toilet seat, the fire extinguisher, the the light tubes, the, the, the garden light? hoe, the garden hoe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm. <laughs> the uh. <laughs> the weed killer, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was fun, though. He did a really good job. Uh, Tommy Dreamer's backstage. He gave him some good feedback and everything like that. And uh, Oh, actually, Tommy Dreamer tagged with your old partner from IWC, too, Channing Decker. Uh, they were the tag team champs, so uh, they were main evented there. So. Well, Channing Decker, one of the biggest stars to have not been – Featured that I know of on television. Yeah, and he's yeah. super talented too. He's super talented. Yeah. He's got and, and a great, great self promoter. And uh, I see on Instagram like he does some of the uh, dark side of the ring. Like some sometimes he does the stand ins for the for the wrestlers. You know. Oh, dude, a lot that's... of times those are pretty good. Like you see silhouettes or whatever, and you're like, man, that looks just like him. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. He's one of those dudes too. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know he did that. That's pretty sweet. I'm well, it's, it's it's all up in Canada, eh? Hey, eh? I know it was so funny because like when I first saw him, I was like, oh, he's the local area guy, like from mm. either maybe like Pittsburgh or Cleveland. And then I was hearing him talk to Tommy Dreamer, and he's had such a like the Montreal, almost like the Montreal or French Canadian accent kind of going on. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 I was telling him about only wrestlers a long time ago, so. Is something he could use to uh, promote his wrestling shows and companies and and himself as well. Absolutely, I was telling some of the wrestlers there too about only wrestlers. I was like, "Hey, you should uh, like sign up and try to get some, some of your name out there." A little What's bit. your brother's match? 
yeah, watch Brothers Match. I did. It was great. And, uh, yeah, that's the thing, too, is, um, yeah, he, he did a really good job. I was really, really happy. You're proud him. to be his brother? I am proud to be his Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it made me feel pretty good. Because we used to roughhouse all the time and wrestle in the in the house and hit each other with tray tables and everything like that. So, You know the city of brotherly love? Philadelphia. Yes, sir. That's next week. Or I guess this week. Sir. Uh, yeah, this week. Yeah, a few days. Mm -hmm. Just a few days. Um, guys, we're live. So if you have any questions, feel free to use the super chat. We're live on uh, Rob's YouTube channel. And we're live on rvdtv.com. You can use the super chat on rvdtv.com. And then, uh, yeah. Whoa, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <that> hours. <laughs> You're right. Why is that next to you? Um, someone left it here. That's funny. Someone fetched it and <laughs> said it on me. Oh, they brought it back. Yeah. We do that all the time. We step on it and it fucking like gives us a little mini, it's mini, the mini heart attack. We have, and it's yeah. always somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they strategically put different rooms because they carry it around the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they strategically plan it so you'll step on it and scare you. Yeah. yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> hey, but yeah, everybody, if you uh, aren't familiar, Only Wrestlers is a new platform you can check out that uh, Rob and Katie launched. Um, and uh, last month, I, bl I believe it officially launched. And then uh, so that we've been they've been getting new members and a lot of people have been signing up from all across the world. Every and, uh, day. Every day. Every day. Yeah, it's growing and growing. It's exciting. And um, so letting it letting it do its thing. Yeah, yeah. And so you guys building up a big fan base, and then uh, now uh, my partners want to start the next phase where they start voting on uh, on stuff, which oh. will increasingly grow in importance um, and 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 value of, as far as their vote on on what it does to move the OWA forward. So, so uh, that's pretty cool. Um, we're, we're um, about there, but still uh, every time we look, there's uh, more, more wrestlers and, and more followers. And um, we're pretty stoked, pretty stoked. And yeah, um, there's yeah. a stories element now too. You, people can do stories on it. We have stories, um, which is cool. I want to, you gotta upload it from your photo, from your photos on your phone, though. You know, you're, yeah. you gotta do a video and then upload it. It'd be more convenient if it was a direct story right on. So that's what I, what I want to do. So you could just add to it throughout the day. You know, I'll be like, hey, I'm at this diner. Look, I'm, uh, I'm, hey, RVD at a diner. Look, you know, look, yeah. I'm eating pancakes. I'm you know. eating pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so but we do we did just get the stories and and a couple of bugs uh, to work out there and the uh, community chat room is coming so that's when everyone's going to be able to actually talk with each other and stuff and and then that's going to be a huge moment of growth. Heck yeah, Heck yeah, yeah, changing the game here, changing the game. You guys can join in right now. Go to onlywrestlers .com, sign up, check out all the other talent that are on there. Um, there's Sabu, there's so many different ones that uh, you can check out. I, Violent J is on there from ICP, uh, so lots and lots of cool names and up up and coming names too. So uh, be and sure. you know, like uh, so a lot of times people say, you know, what's what's on there or what's the difference, you know, between like that and Instagram or the other social media um, outlets and. And, you know, like for everybody, they could have something different that they want to share. But the exclusivity is where the value is at. Like, obviously, with the stories, if I can update it throughout the day, I'm taking you with me um, on my days. You know what I mean? And and that's what I what I want to do ultimately when I uh, get all the technology worked out the way I need it. Uh, so I don't have to learn anything new. It could just learn me. But um, um, what I was going to say about uh, about that is, as far as exclusivity goes, you know, the last week or so, there's several things that I that I that I say 
to my only wrestlers followers that I wouldn't say public. And I even say on there, if this starts getting out, if they start saying as reported on RVD's only wrestling profile, you're going to break our trust. And, uh, and I'm not going to be sharing quite as much, but, you know, um, going through uh, last week's adventures from uh, Canada to uh, Orlando and then uh, off to Philly next week. And, uh, you know, the, as far as the behind the scenes exclusive info there, um, it's uh, kind of interesting, I would think. Ooh, so there you go. Yeah, that's the neat thing about it is like you can a lot of people do that to like, yeah, it brings people in and yeah, you can give a little insight. It's the extra stuff that I'm not that I don't want even out. But, you know, for my intimate gathering of uh, supporters that follow me and watch my videos that only wrestlers, I mean, hell, you got to trust somebody. That's it. You got to. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a a cop today, by the way. Do I look like? <laughs> yeah. I've been getting that with the mustache a lot. <laughs> yeah, mustache and the hat. Say, mustache and the hat. Say, do you have an ID? <laughs> do you have, a, yeah. do you have an ID? No. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Are you a narc? I'm a narc. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. So yeah, sign up onlywrestlers.com. Check it out. Really, really cool stuff. More things to come on that. Um, uh, very, very cool. What's up, guys? This week on One of a Kind with RVD, I'm happy to present to you our one of our favorite sponsors, and that is Mando. Mando is awesome. I'm not just saying that either because they sent us a whole new nice starter pack that I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit. I'm saying because I legitimately love this product. Uh, it's so cool. Uh, the starter pack that I got, I loved it. It was Mount Fuji themed. And that's my all-time favorite that we have. The scent is awesome. What's neat about Mando is, like, you're so used to smelling all these deodorants and, you know, these guys trying too hard with these strong, strong deodorant smells. And it's just, it hits you like a punch in the face. Like a punch in the face. But I like Mando because it's a little bit more low-key. But it smells great. You don't feel like you're overpowering and, like, uh, taking over the room with your scent. But you smell great. And you feel confident. And, um... I can't speak highly enough of what Mando, the products that they have. They have the deodorant. They have the body wash. They have the the dude wipes, which the dude wipes are awesome. I ran out of them very quickly, and I already want some more. But my favorite I got to go with is the the deodorant. And uh, you can rub that on anywhere, anywhere. So, uh, But I've just used it on my pits and the, the, the usual areas, so you can't beat it. Uh, yes, uh, it's great stuff. Um, and I do have to say, too, Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers, like me. It comes with solid stick deodorant. That's what I like, the Mount Fuji, the cream tube deodorant. I haven't even tried that yet because I want to hold on to some of this stuff. Two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. I also did get, too, that something I loved, and that ran out really quickly, too, was just their soap. Like, just their regular bar of soap was awesome. Uh, and that, that was Mount Fuji as well. And man, I was so bummed when I ran out of that too. Uh, but as a special offer for our listeners, new customers can get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code that equates to over 40% of your starter pack use. So you can just use code RVD at shopmando.com. That's S H O P M A N D O.com. Please support all our show and tell them that we sent you. Smell fresher, stay drier, boost your confidence from head to toe with Mando. Promo code RVD. Hey, Rob, did we talk about this last week? Manny just chimed in with this. Uh, what's RVD think about the Raven documentary? Did we did we talk about that last week? I'm trying to think of it. I don't think we did. Um, did you see the trailer or anything? Uh, yeah, I, I think I retweeted it and then didn't really watch it that that good. Mm -hmm. I just retweeted it anyway, and I rewatched it today. Oh, nice! Uh, it pop, popped up on YouTube, and uh, me and Katie watched it. It looks really good, and I'm not just saying that because Rob Van Dam's in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does look it does look uh, really good, and. Uh, that's cool. You know, a story that's not told um, a lot, you know, and, and 
and a very interesting character. So I think that um, hopefully it'll do really well. Yeah, absolutely. Raven's such a yeah, unique guy. And, uh, very smart. I remember he was on Win Ben Spines Money. Oh, it's a sweet toy. <laughs> Lovey brought it to me. She brought it back for you. <laughs> it's a loud toy. I think it adds good. It's good fully sound effects, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm excited to see it. And uh, Raven's such a fascinating character. And uh, I loved his, just the, the what he kind of set in the 90s. Like, was that kind of, you know, grungy kind of vibe, that loner vibe. It really set up a kind of a neat new heel. But it was also, like, likable in a lot of ways, too. Yeah, yeah. Cool. The fans, the ECW fans, really liked him. Uh when I first got there in 96 mm -hmm. and um, I didn't really get it, you know, I just knew that he was really over and, you know, felt like it, it, sometimes I just felt like, wow, this is when I was brand new. I felt like this is his house, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I never had been around grunge either. So that was my, that was, that was my introduction to, uh, <laughs> um, well, she's so fast. That was my introduction to uh, the whole that that music, and then you know the whole uh, attire, you know the clothes that they're wearing, and how they rep how they represent, you know, like with their their looks and their attitude and everything. I I'd never been around that, and it was like Raven was 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 that for me, like the first time seeing that. And I remember. Uh, one of the first weeks that I was in ECW was like really, you know, pretty new still. And mm -hmm. I remember we went to a nightclub in um, in Philadelphia, and and it was like wow, there's like a bunch of people like Raven, like it was all grungy people, and I was just like, that must be what people in this part of the country, you know, look like and and do, you know, because I, I come that time from Georgia and it was all redneck you know, USA you come on everybody come on now come on and it was total different style with the music and uh, everything you know their hair uh, but I remember going to the nightclub and uh, Pitbull Anthony I think the Pitbulls worked at that club that was, oh. that's the question I got was that they worked there I think they I think it was a night off for them. I'm not even sure about that, but Raven seemed to know a lot of people there as well. Like they seemed like locals. They were really over in that particular nightclub. And uh, that's what I, you know, when I think of my first time seeing the whole feeling that grunge vibe, that was it. That was it. Yeah. I wonder what bar that was. I wonder if, uh, where that was it or the nightclub it, if it was in South. I really don't remember much about it. I just remember it seemed dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it was so long ago. That's a while. Man, yeah. Uh Philly's Philly's an interesting city. I sure like it. Uh I lived there five years and it was nice. And uh I do miss I could see myself moving back there at some point, I think actually it's Philly. So we'll have to see that. But cool. yeah, this uh Last week, though, you were at NXT uh, in Orlando, um, and uh, you were hanging out with Ava Rain before that. And then afterwards, uh, you got a little involved with uh, Wes Lee and Javon Evans a little bit. Talk about your experience down there, Rob. Uh, how was it uh, being – was that your first time at the Capitol Wrestling Center, like when it's been updated like that? or? Um, it, well, I mean, I've been there twice before, mm -hmm. and it was a long time ago. Um Ten years ago. Oh, okay, yeah. Matter of fact, but um, it did look a little different. They definitely had moved some stuff around, and if they had that many warehouses, then I didn't realize it before. You know that they got um, a lot of that is theirs, and they have their stuff there. And um, but it was really cool. It was just a good experience. Everybody was grateful. Um, you know, everyone's happy and. Uh, giving the legends a lot of love so um th nothing uh terribly exciting but also seen a lot of a lot of my peers uh as well 
you know. And uh, Bubba Ray Dudley, he was standing in the ring when I walked in one time to the that area. Mm-hmm. And and I and I was looking from behind, and I even had to ask Katie. I said, "That's Bubba, right?" Then I slid in behind him to surprise him, and his calves almost exploded in my face. <laughs> I texted him and told him that. <laughs> uh, but his calves were huge, and veins popping out, and fucking. Uh, Looks like he's been doing some uh, some toe raises. So good job, Bubba. A little, and, a little. Yeah. Um, you know, saw Shawn Michaels, saw Terry Taylor. Um, William Regal? Did you see him? Yes. Yes, yeah. I did. Yep. How about that? Yeah. And um, maybe even another person. But, um, you know, even like the the crew guys, you know, like camera guys and stuff, like it's sometimes you just look up or I shouldn't say you, but that's what kids do nowadays to express themselves. It's projecting. But I would look up and um, just like, damn, I know that face, you know, happy to see the camera guy, this dude, like, I don't even know where all I know those guys from, like which companies and stuff. It's just that I've seen them for so many years. And it was like that in AEW as well. You know, a lot of people that were in TNA or WWE seem to work there behind the scenes in the in the actual equipment and, and that part of the show. And it's cool, you know, to see that people can have careers in the industry behind the camera like that and 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 that their work can lead towards more work you know mm-hmm. yeah and it's like some steady stuff and <sighs> they build up a resume and hey there it is like and they connect make relationships and all that kind of stuff and i think that's that's kind of a neat thing too it's even in, on a smaller scale when i go to like shows and stuff like that i'll see familiar faces all the time that are like working on the production or doing certain things it's like oh i didn't know you were going to be here that kind of thing it's neat definitely a neat part of it exactly mm-hmm. um how was it that uh interact with like ava rain with the rock's daughter and all that stuff was that how, how was she uh to to kind of be on the same camera with and all that stuff well i had to yell at her a couple times you know to get her to really start paying <laughs> i was just took <laughs> <laughs> um she was cool everybody was cool um you know, like, uh, I was just kind of like an extra just popping in and being me and, um, and they were all there learning and doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you say, uh, you mentioned when you went to be with Katie and stuff like that on SmackDown, you said that there was such a new energy there and a good, good vibe. Did that kind of convey in NXT too? Did you have that kind of vibe for it as well? Like how the feel of the 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 operation is, I guess, if you will. Yeah, yeah. It seemed it seemed like it um, for the most part. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's it's really. Like those conversations, it's really about the substance of, of of wrestling, and and thankfully, yes, that's what NXT and hopefully all the products of WWE will will contain in their foundation. Because without it, man, it just it, it gets to be uh, well everything but wrestling. You know, it's, you know that's like having all the all the extra toppings on your ice cream with no ice cream. You're not going to eat all those cherries and nuts and sit in a fucking bowl. Right? Yeah. But I don't know. It's just, it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's like that when it gets away from the wrestling and instead we'll just do garbage matches and grab each other and both jump. And, you know, uh, I think maybe, uh, maybe the different companies will separate in the styles that they do and that doesn't sound like that bad of an idea no no it doesn't you know um 
Yeah, there's a well. I guess that would leads me into the other thing I had uh, typed out for us was um, that whole WEID thing. Did you hear about that? Or oh, I heard about it. I don't know that much about it. I forgot to look it up. But is that the WWE is working with independent groups? Right? Independent groups like certain schools and stuff like that for the starting point of it all. Um, here I pulled up a little bit of the information on there. Okay, so this is what it says. WWE Independent Development is designed to provide independent wrestlers a clear pathway to a potential career in WWE. Following the success of WWE's NIL program, WEID has been constructed to support independent wrestling prospects and schools with world-class training, development, and mentorship, in turn raising the pro profile of and strengthening the independent wrestling ecosystem. WWE will provide the most prominent independent wrestling schools in the U.S. with the WEID official designation with the goal of guiding new trainees and existing talent at these select institutions with enhanced and developmental opportunities. And then it says WEID will identify top independent wrestling prospects with an official WEID prospect designation to support their developmental journey. WEID will give fans the opportunity to follow the paths of these standout prospects on the independent wrestling scene through curated behind-the-scenes content, as well as highlights and matches showcased across WWE's platform, social platform. So, uh, yeah, and I know Booker T's promotion is tied with it. Um, I know Cody Rhodes' uh, Nightmare Factory is a part of it. Uh, Rikishi uh, in the Samoan Dynasty School out in California is tied to it. Uh, Seth Rollins' uh, uh, Black and Brave, I think his promotion out in Iowa is called. Uh, th there's tied to it. So they have like about five or six in total right now, but, um, uh, I'm sure that that'll kind of expand and, uh, new one, new, uh, other schools will get that designation too. But it seems like a pretty good thing to kind of get people, Hey, invested into how the W process works with, you know, the style and all that stuff. But maybe too, I was thinking it'll wash away some of like the disreputable schools and st people that don't have that kind of qualifications to necessarily be teaching wrestling even though they they do that sometimes <laughs> you know well, yeah i mean if if wwe continues to to do this and partners with and therefore legitimizes certain organizations it could be like the old territory days you know where companies all over the country could be under the umbrella of WWE and that would leave the others to then be outlaws. You know, that's mm -hmm. what, that's what you used to call the ones that were uh, not, not part of the, uh, the big machine. And um, it, it could be you just like it, that'd be interesting just to see the history go back to where it came from, which, which happens a lot, you know, in uh, full circle. So I can see it. It looks uh, pretty cool. WWE is on the grow, and um, you got to have places to put that, that that growing energy. And, man, they're just a machine for it. They're always finding new ways to, 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 to grow and to put their growth into. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, like they mentioned the NIL program with the college athletics, and then kind of like – uh, spreading their tentacles out to the independent wrestling scene and like making that connection more and like making sure that they're covering a lot of the bases for like, Hey, we are going to grow bigger and global, more global, even than we already are. And it's you watch fucking uh, next year, they'll announce plans for the WWE amusement park, the amusement park, or maybe they'll make it uh, something on the moon. We'll land on the moon with WWE. Uh, maybe, how, yeah. how fantastic would that be? I don't know what I'm saying. I think if there's ever been a character, there's been Max Moon. Max Moon. <laughs> I'm trying. Chris Statlander was an alien for a little bit. Mm. Mm, I'm trying to think if there's a. I, I don't know. Alien gimmicks. Uh, no. no astronaut, though. Huh? No astronaut. There should be an astronaut. Maybe I can pitch that to Marcus since he lost his first match. Become an astronaut, Marcus, a wrestler. I'd be. Somebody was telling me, get this, Rob. Somebody was telling me that there's a, another local wrestler. That he's named ban Bananama, and he dresses up like a big banana, and he hands out bananas. He's really weird. Nobody wants to work with him, apparently. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sounds sounds like someone that could slip out of your grip. Oh boy, hey oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
there, there, there is like a whole, I don't know, fetish isn't the right thing, but like a whole um, thing of, you know, wrestlers like wearing like big stuffed animal outfits, like the big panda bear and all that. Like, I think maybe it's mostly Japan, but whenever I've seen it, it it's always like, it just looks so bizarre to me, you know, but just like anything else that seems to have a following it does yeah the furries and all that stuff that, the, pittsburgh has we're known for the big furry convention oh okay yeah this is right up your alley right Maybe. you should see i have a fucking dress up like a fox and i walk around <laughs> <laughs> I walk around pittsburgh like that it's it's a little uh jarring to see uh big stuffed animals walking around <laughs> throws me off a little bit uh we have some super chats gotta give some shout outs here let's see let's see uh patrick just gave us five bucks thanks man thanks for the five bucks appreciate it um rbd rbd uh our usual too jim d gives us 10 bucks just gives us 10 bucks thanks jim <laughs> man um and then we have a super chat with a question Ooh. Big Rock uh, with 10 bucks. He says, what's up, Rob and Dom? I was watching some old SmackDown from 2004 and got upset when I saw RVD lose to the Bashams. Any memories of going from Raw to SmackDown? Were there different vibes compared to Raw on, than on SmackDown? Mm, I don't remember like when I was on going from which show to which show. You know, I just, yeah. I just remember the change would be inconvenient uh especially if you're riding with somebody and then you're on two different shows now you gotta find your own ride you know yeah, which is probably why i started riding by myself because uh um booker t and i used to uh i don't know if, he, if we got split up you i think you were on raw together he goes on Raw and he was on SmackDown, maybe, or yeah, I don't know, but, but anyway, I just remember that you know, like I really it wasn't a, a huge deal to me, but we kind of knew that SmackDown was kind of like the B show and Raw was the the A show, um, where the, the bigger stars were gonna be, you know, um, Hunter and um i think taker was always on raw um taker he was uh, well uh, yeah i think starting off maybe he was he went to smackdown eventually and he became one of the big guys because teddy longo was, would always be like you're going one-on-one -on -one with the undertaker player i remember that yeah uh so but yeah and, so yeah anyway uh we looked at it that way, you know, like the, the raw was going to be better, better conditions, uh, a little bit. And, um, I don't really, uh, remember as far as, I don't really remember caring that much, um, except, you know, like I said, it can, it could inconvenience you. It's like, you know, when you if you have to move when you're a little kid and you got to go to another school and make new friends again, kind of. But <laughs> at the same time, we're growing up, so it's business, and we're not really there to make friends. You know, but uh, but it is like that to an extent. You go somewhere else, and then you see what the who the cliques are. You know, and they got their own inside jokes or whatever, and. Um, and they have their own feelings about the show too that you don't even know until you're there. Mm -hmm. I remember Brock was the SmackDown guy um, for a lot of a lot of a lot of the time period. I remember when Paul was there. Paul was running SmackDown uh, when I hadn't met Brock yet. I remember that Brock was the guy that that was dominating the SmackDown. I guess he had the Universal belt and. Uh, it just, um, I just remember, like, why is everyone talking so much about that guy? Like, didn't he just come from Ohio Valley? <laughs> he didn't pay his dues yet, you know? And, and then I had to wrestle him at that um, um, 
Mm, I want to say Fatal Four Way. It's not that, but it has. I think. Uh, I'm looking. Uh, I wrestled Jericho, and then I wrestled Brock in a, this tournament. Um, was that for the title? That the one? Uh, no, hold on. I'm thinking here. Four way. Let's see if this pops up. Anyway. Oh, um, mm. Yeah. A- anyway, though, um, and then I got to wrestle with him, and and then really watch him afterwards, and. Yeah, I, I quickly became a big fan of of his abilities, but um, that's that's about it, you know. As far as uh, memories of being um, being drafted, I feel like I was on Raw mostly, but I know I was on SmackDown for part of the time, and it seems like I always did both shows anyway. Yeah. So, uh, well, uh, so I'm looking on Reddit here, Rob. It's kind of neat. Somebody I posted some highlights of your ma- of a match you had with Brock in 2002. Insurrection. Uh, maybe. Hold on. Oh, King of the Ring. Well, what? I think that I see some King of. The- There's several highlights actually. King of, King of the Ring. Yeah, I think I think that was King of the, the Ring. One. I think I- that's what was trying to develop in my head. Oh, I bet you that was it then. Yeah, King of the Ring because of the tournament and stuff like that. Yeah. But somebody said this in the comments I'm looking. So somebody said, I was very surprised to see RVD getting a shout out in Lesnar's book. And so I guess what Lesnar said about you said, I liked working with RVD. He never complained and neither did I. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know, huh? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, guys. Remember the days when you were always ready to go? Now you can increase your performance and get the extra confidence in bed. Listen up. BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. So you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Mm. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you receive prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in the line at the pharmacy. BlueChew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. They always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code RVD at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code RVD to receive your first month free. Visit Blue Chew for more details and important safety information. And we, RVD and I, thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. So Seth, our music man himself, he gives a little super chat. Thanks for the 20 bucks, Seth. You're the man. He says, A, it's RVD on NXT, two of my favorite things. Did you have any notable interactions with talent or watch any matches? Have you seen Stephanie Vacour? She seems legit. She works real realistic and does creative stuff. She is pretty good, Seth. I'll agree with that. Uh, Yeah, did you get any catch any matches or any? Uh, interact with any of the youngsters there, I guess. Uh, I saw some of the matches, um, but I don't necessarily know all the names. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure who all I was watching, you know, but um, definitely some talented uh, wrestlers. Um, I watched, I watched the whole show. I think I watched the whole show, um, that I was on to try to prepare, you know, for next week so that I know everybody a little bit better and know, have a better idea of what the whole thing is leading into going to the ECW arena, you know? Um, but I met everybody. Everyone was super cool. But, you know, they all come up and introduce, hi, I'm Veronica. Hi, you know, good to meet you. You know, what was her name? I don't remember. Yeah. 
yeah, it's tough when you meet yeah. that many people. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. Did you get to meet Kalani Jordan though? Who's uh, like the, who's been patterned herself a lot? So that's um, I I met her a long time ago. Oh, did you? So okay. We, yeah, we've run into each other a few times. So yeah, oh, she's cool. she's a sweetheart. That's awesome. I met her at the uh, House of Blues. Um, I think it was WrestleMania week. Oh, when, nice. you know when they do the um, uh, Wally Mania. The Wa oh, Wally Mania. I love Wally Mania. I was there once when it was in New York City, and I got a bro. Oh. I got a bro hug from. Uh, Oh, oh my God! The rapper. Why am I blanking on his name? Uh, West Side Gun. He gave me a bro hug, and I was like, "What's up, West Side?" And I felt, I felt in. I felt, I felt. <laughs> <laughs> I felt yeah, Kitty loves Wally Mania. She looks forward to it every year. Yeah. Wally Mania. I say Wally, and it's Wally. I say it wrong. She always corrects me. But... <laughs> Wally Mania. That was uh, Christmas vacation. <laughs> so uh cool let's see well what we'll wrap up here pretty quick because we have a busy week but let's see the other thing i want to touch upon oh this is something i thought would be pretty cool to get your perspective on so adam cole a couple weeks ago made some comments regarding uh how he's been criticized for his body type and stuff like that for a spot say what He's been criticized for a spot, you say? Oh, no, for uh, his body. Oh. So, like, so, like, somebody asked him about, like, him kind of getting, like, body shamed online and stuff like that. And I thought he gave a really good response. I'll read it here. But then Cody Rhodes was asked about this, too. So I, I'll read both these quotes, and then I wanted your perspective on it, too. Okay. So, uh, Adam Cole on body shaming. So he said, people allowed to say what they want to say. Does it feel good? Not at all. It definitely doesn't. At the same time, if I'm someone who wants to be in the entertainment business and in the public eye, I know it's something I have to expect to deal with in a lot of ways. And then he also said, I know I handle things. I know everyone handles it differently. For me, I've gotten to the point where I kind of ignore it or block it out as best as I can. I'm focused on making me the best version of me. I try not to get too discouraged with what social media can say. And then Cody Rhodes was on a different podcast and was asked about this. I don't know if he was asked necessarily about Adam Cole, but about the aspect of body shaming. And so he says this, this is a vanity business. If you're trying to be on the come up, you've got to get in the best shape of your career. The guy I'm getting ready to wrestle at Crown Jewel is named Gunther. He used to be on the independent team named Walter. And Walter was very, very, I don't want to say overweight, but he was not a muscle you could see. There was not a muscle you could see on him. A big, hefty, chop a tree down killer dude. The manifestation of his goals is right there in his physique. You can see he's gotten the best shape of his career. He looks incredible. He looks the part. And th then he says, and then there's this weird online contingent that doesn't real how, realize how important that is. We are wrestling with our shirts off, folks. You are standing next to some of the best athletes in the world. It's okay to go to the gym. We have what we call effort shamers. And then you'll hear all fans say, you can't body shame wrestlers. What are you talking about? We're standing there half naked and you paid hundreds of dollars to see us. You can body shame me all you want. And so, Rob, I wanted your perspective on this. I remember when you uh, made your debut on AEW you were like saying like how people were thinking that you were like out of shape and all that stuff because of like the shirt you're wearing or didn't fit well or something like that. And you like proved them all wrong and everything like that. But I wanted to get your thoughts on that because I thought it was a pretty interesting comments for both those guys. And I, knew, I imagine that you have a pretty good perspective on that. Um, well, I mean, it, it, it seems like, Standards are changing, you know, so the world is always changing so quick. But when I watched wrestling and there was a natural Butch Reed and Billy Graham and Ultimate Warrior and Rick Rude and Hulk Hogan and Sid Vicious and there was just so many like big jacked up guys, you know, Lex Luger. Um the whole average weight of the wrestler back then was higher. You know, like when wrestlers looked a certain way, you know, like when the wrestlers were at the bar, they were the big dudes that you don't want to mess with. Uh, and that's how they used to sell tickets, you know, by being freaks and, and, and standing out. And, and now... 
um, a lot of the wrestlers look like regular people when when their clothes are on. They could be on the bus, a <laughs> city bus, uh, with a hat and jacket on and look just like everybody else. And part of, part of that is because the style has changed so much. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I helped bridge that, that, that gap with the physical style. And, you know, 400-pound guys aren't going to be able to do all the same moves. And if they can, who's going to want to lay there for your 450 off the top rope? Fuck that. Um, but be, because it's so much more athletic now, you have to be in such a better condition. You also have to be smaller than um, than, than you used to. You know, the 260-plus guys are – um, they, you know, they're going to have to be in shape, but some, sometimes, um, in the sport of fighting in general, you got some guys that look like they're out of shape, but they're obviously not, you know, maybe, maybe Kevin Owens, uh, falls into that. Uh, and then, you know, how about, you know, when it comes to UFC, how about, uh, Nel- Roy Nelson, country boy? Right yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy looks like he would be out of shape, but you can't throw your hands for that many minutes uh, when you're dancing around like that and not have a heart attack and um, and be in, in crappy shape. You can't. You know, you have to. You have to be in amazing shape to do what any of the guys are doing in the ring. And so some of the guys will look different. They shouldn't all look like bodybuilders. You know, there should be guys that look like sumo wrestlers, uh, whatever. Um, So my opinion is it's more in the conditioning than the bodybuilding. Um, And that's, that's how I feel about that. I think, um, although the average weight now is, I don't know, 80 pounds less than, than it was maybe, um, 30 years ago, mm-hmm. but, um, that still isn't enough time for people to adjust. So if you're a small dude and you tell people you're a pro wrestler, I think you should expect people to be like, you, I could take you because that's what goes through their mind. Yeah. If you were little, they should expect that. And if you're in the entertainment business, you do got to have thick skin and and you got to, you got to know enough about yourself to not let people start to question your own um, self-reflection because that's, that's what's important. But um, so, you know, size is still uh, something in the whole fighting game overall. You know, even if it was UFC, if there's like a little, uh, say, 110 pound dude and, uh, and someone says, see that little guy right there? The guy's from uh, Zimbabwe and he's the uh, super lightweight world champion, man. That dude. He could take out anybody in this bar. And you look at him, he's 110 pounds, and you're like, what? <laughs> Dude, come on, I could take this guy. Like, your your ego is going to tell you that based on size. That's one of the factors from primal instinct. That's one of the first things, you know, that's why animals, like, <clears throat> you know, throw out their whatever they can to look bigger, like the raptors. and Yeah, yeah. Uh, even my dogs, they get like when they get when they bark uh, and they're barking at something, the hair on their back stands up. Yeah. You know, like that's that's supposed to make them look more intimidating because they're bigger, I guess. But that's all that's all part of nature, though. And so so they should expect it, and they should just uh, keep on trying to be so damn good that they're proving them wrong. Yeah, I like that, Rob like that yeah and uh, like you hear too it's like there's so many different body types when it was back like even in that those days but there was that convention of hey you have you know your rick roods or your warriors and all that stuff but then you had guys like that could really go still in the ring like a dusty Rhodes or 
a Buddy Rose or um, Jerry Blackwell. Those are like bigger dudes that were all like that and had their own. They could, but to you, what you were saying, like you have to have that conditioning and all that stuff that really. Right. Work. They sometimes they look like they're not in shape, but you could not last that long. Trust me, it's hard to breathe when you're in the ring, especially if you got somebody laying on top of you. And then, uh, you know, you're pushing and pulling them around. Um, man, it doesn't – now you start hitting the ropes. It doesn't take long at all till you're you're breathing in and out pretty heavy. And, uh, man, if you weren't in excellent shape, you wouldn't last five minutes. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus's matches went like six minutes. He said, and he was like, I was feeling, I was, he was like, I was starting to get, get there at the end yeah. of it. He said he was feeling it. He was feeling it pretty good. Even at the end of that. So, uh, uh, Frankie Terizo with the five bucks. He said, thank you, Frankie. He says, have you gotten much heat over your career for making other guys look limited? I think it's awesome by the way. Oh, he says, I think it's awesome. By the way, I had RVD ponytail and thick stubble for years. He was <laughs> Yeah, did you get flack for like making I don't know that that aspect of it all? Do you remember? Um, I don't think specifically anybody was mad or feeling that they looked limited next to me and my capabilities i mean that right there is the story usually of the match you know the heel mm -hmm. the heels chasing the baby face can't catch him because the guy's you know got all these cool tumbles and flips and he's bouncing all over the place and uh making the heel look like a fool that would that would um that would be uh n not a problem that would be something that would make story you know easy but uh man i have a lot of people that now that want to do my moves when they're working with me you know and they and they, and they say that because they do the moves when i'm not there <laughs> that's why it's not because it makes sense because they're working against me but um or maybe every time they do it it's everyone knows they're doing my move and so it makes sense i don't know but um I have had people when I was starting out, when I was like really young in the early nineties, I had a few wrestlers try to limit the moves that I gave uh, because they believed that it would mean more. Oh, and one of those was Rip Rogers. And one of those guys was Ricky Nelson from, uh, from South Atlantic pro wrestling. And both of those guys told me the same thing. You know, super young, uh, 22 years old, said, um, man, if you do, you doing all those flips and kicks and stuff through the whole match, it don't mean nothing. You know, what you do is just, you know, just save it, save it till the very end. And then you do one kick and then bam, see, now it means something. Now it's special. And man, I, I just disagreed so much with those guys. I'm like, so the rest of the match, the other 99% of the mats, I should be just like everybody else. And you should be able to call the mats for us when you don't even know my moves, you know, like, because the heels could do that. Arm drag, arm drag, you know, grab an arm. But, the, yeah, if you're just filling a spot, just filling a blank, you know, uh, you, you know what I mean? Like, that, if you're that expendable and, and you're just another um, – flesh bag of bones there and you can swap out and anybody could have the exact same match but i didn't want to be one of those guys yeah and like i think the neat thing is is like hey um i and people are already doing it today still is like oh i'd love to see this guy go up against rvd the style of rvd brings the different element to pro you still wrestle you're still a wrestler but it's like he's changed the game in so many different ways where it's just like, how would this guy go against it? And so like, even you talk about going up against Brock Lesnar and how different that was, it's just like, that's what makes wrestling cool. Is that kind of aspect? Of it. Yeah, so, absolutely. So cool. Cool. Um, Rob, is there anything else that you wanted to cover before we kind of mm -hmm. wrap things up? 
No, I don't think so. I'm a bit a bit on the tired side tonight. Yes, yes, so, me too. Yeah, <laughs> I've been running on five hours of sleep. I think mm-hmm. uh, so. It's the last night, and then I, I work at six in the morning tomorrow. So that's always fun. I've been waking up in the middle of the night, and then and then uh, to work out, and then I stay awake for anywhere from three to six hours, and then go back and get the second. Uh, half of my night in and uh after so many days that takes its limits you know like uh i gotta i switch it up tonight i'm gonna sleep all the way through that means i gotta work out before i go to bed but i get up at three or four a lot of times and then go back to bed at seven eight so you work out at three or four in the morning and then you go like yeah, yeah i get up and usually smoke a doobie and stretch out and uh Usually kill an hour, eat a little something. Uh, but yeah, work out like an hour after I get up. And and then uh, sometimes that's an hour and a half. Sometimes two uh, if I'm stretching a lot too. And then um, um, I don't know. Sometimes I'll end up killing like. A big window period where I'll be up, but it's usually because the uh, like my pre workout will have me motivated, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's right, I got a couple of cameos I got to do too," you know. And then oh, and then you'll knock those out too. Yeah, and then I got to knock those out, and then it's like, uh, well, you know, let me let me look in the office real quick and uh, see. I'll just I'll just pull out the papers that I need when I get up later, and so I do that too. Yeah, that's I do that. Do you find? But, Working out like that, like like really early in the morning, like is, do you find that to be helpful in a lot of ways too, or is it really- in a lot of ways? But usually it's just punishment for me because I didn't get it in earlier. <laughs> yeah, it's just like oh, that's, that's what, <laughs> I never learned. I always think you know that that's gonna <laughs> keep me on my game, but I'm not. Um, sometimes I wake up and I'm still tired, but um, I'll drink pre workout, smoke a doobie. Sometimes take some kratom or whatever, and then, uh, man, by the end of the doobie, usually my mood has changed so much. Usually I'm like, because I, I get out of bed, and I'm like, I got to make this workout short so I can get right back to sleep. And then and then by the time I'm done with my pre-workout and my doobie and, and, and I'm ready to go work out, all of a sudden it's like there's no time more important than right now, no matter how long this workout takes. This is what I got to do. You know, I'm up right now while people are sleeping. I'm going out there to get results. And, and I just totally changed my mind and I get into it. Yeah, yeah, it helps too. Like, that's the thing too, is like when I'd go to the gym, I'd be like, dude, nobody's working out right now in the morning. I'm like, I'm doing it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. 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 That's pretty neat. Seth chimes in. He says, P.S. I got a brutal cold for the first time in years. Oh, man, Seth. Oh, okay. sorry to hear that, dude. To hear that, dude. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, drink a lot of emergency. Um, Jim or, D. Yeah, or just zinc and vitamin C, that helps. Which, is, which is what that shit's made out of. Oh, what it is? Yeah. <laughs> or zinc and vitamin C. Jim D does give us another ten dollars and ask this question: At their peak, who was uh, who had the bigger gas tank, cardio wise, Sting or John Cena? Oh man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know the answer to that. You know, like, um, poof, I, I actually forgot that I worked staying for a minute there, and I had to remember. I guess I did a couple times in TNA, um, and uh, neither one of those guys was gassed, and neither was I in our matches. So how do you know? Yeah. Unless you know, unless you really are are with somebody. And you're both really being put to the test, you know, and you can and you can feel that energy together. Otherwise, or you're just with somebody that, that's that's blown up and useless the whole time. Uh, one or the other. Otherwise, how would you know? You know, if you're right. uh, if you're two or more great athletes and you're in the ring and you feel great all the way through and you still feel good afterwards when you leave and you're not hurt, you're not injured, uh, you know, usually you're pretty happy. So I don't know how, how you would judge, you know, something like that with the cardio. I do not know. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a tough thing to gauge. I think 
if you get to that point. Uh, I think it was Steve Austin who took a lot of pride in having like a big, big gas tank. And I think he would try to push people to their limits in their, their matches or something. That was like almost like a, a game he would play with the guys going in. I think Kurt Angle told that story or something. I can't remember. But it is why. Well, I, I mean, that's – I'm always showing off, doing, you know, like little jumping jacks and stuff. and um, But I pace I pace myself uh, through the match. But um, I, if I wrestle once and then six months I don't wrestle, then I wrestle again, I'm not going to be in my best uh, wrestling condition, even when, even if I've been doing a lot of cardio, uh, you know. But um, uh, there's sometimes – even when I had great cardio, sometimes, um, you know, just like Seth, you know, sometimes show up to work and your sinuses are stuffed up and you can't breathe right. Uh-oh. How am I going to get in the ring and wrestle? And I can't, like, I can't breathe right. Like, like I'm all stuffed up through my nose and, and fucking, uh, and then, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes that happens and sometimes you might be jet lagged too, just from, you know, like your jet lag, sometimes your body just feels like feels like your soul just like came leaked right out, right out and just left your <laughs> your skin outfit there. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> that's what jet lag feels like sometimes. It's it's just when I, if I'm gone for a while and then come back like international or something that bad, like the, the really, really bad jet lag. Oh my god, I remember um realizing that that could affect my cardio in the ring too and and so i was ultra aware of it because one time i was just laying on the mat in japan and it, and i oh god it just it, it, it sucks it's the worst thing being blown up when you feel like you can't even like can't even like move at full speed you know and you can't and you feel like so vulnerable like oh my god somebody could just sit on me and i would die right now and it's, <laughs> it's the opposite of feeling tough you know yeah. worse vulnerable i hate it um but some guys would you know used to you know would, would get get um blowed up and kind of stay blowed up uh their whole match and some guys it's amazing they haven't had heart attacks you know but with the style that it is now, too, though, you, everyone's got to be in pretty damn good shape. Dang good shape, that's for sure. Who we? USA! USA! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Uh, while we have we have over 5,500 people here, well, I'll plug Only Wrestlers again. Go to OnlyWrestlers.com, sign up, uh, get on in the early front there, and uh, – you can subscribe to Rob's channel for free. You can subscribe to Chady, Katie's channel for free. And then the Only Wrestlers account for free, too. So check it out. Um, I'll be starting some content on there, too, at some point here in the near, near future. And there's plenty of other wrestlers that you can check out on there, too, uh, and uh, get the yeah. word out about stuff. There's so much different opportunity going on at OnlyWrestlers.com, so be sure to check that out. Um, be sure to rate us on podcasts, uh, whether it's Spotify or Apple. You can go on there, give us five stars, like a five-star frog splash, and uh, you can help out the show. Uh, in turn, two, you can get some RV. Well, look at that. Oh, my God. You're going to let her open her. I was, I was opening up this box uh, <laughs> while, we were, while we were talking. Oh, of course, it's wrapped in plastic. It's, oh. from, it's from Greek glass. Is it Greek glass? Yeah. Oh, man. New stuff. I should have known it was going to be... Well, plastic bubble wrap, bubble, bubble wrap. wrap, bubble, bubble, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Okay, um, and it ends up being this guy. Ooh, let's take a look. Hey, RV. Hey, oh, that's cool. RV. Um, yes, let's see. We're gonna put water in this. I'm actually not even sure. Um, I'm not sure. Ooh. We'll have to get some intel on it. Oh, it's cool. It's got like a looks awesome. It's got a little thing in the middle of it. It definitely looks like it wants to hold water, but um but there's nothing to pack or light. Is it like an attachment of some sort? I believe so. I just don't know where where would it 
Tetch. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we're, but we're, I'll we're, find out. But anyway, thanks, Green Glass. Yeah, go to rvd420.com. Let me make sure that works. All right. Yes, rvd420.com. You can check out all the different stuff they got. Hello. Wow, they got a lot of cool stuff on there that you can check out. There's like a, I see it right here, Rob. It's a Puffco scallop attachment. A Puffco scallop attachment? Scallop attachment. A two-hole diffuser. Oh, wow. They have the artist on here and stuff, too. And yes. There's only one hole, though, right? Um, it says a two-hole diffuser. I don't know, though. I, the one at the top I see, I can't. They don't show the bottom of it on that one. We'll have to get more intel from. Uh, yeah, this is solid here. It's solid down below. Oh, is it? Okay. So, it, but it said they say a two hole diffuser. So interesting. That yeah. looks sweet, though. It looks like you could put a tiny ship in there. Like, you know how they do this? <laughs> <Hey. laughs> it looks like it would hold smoke. But then, yeah. But how do you get the smoke in there unless it's like a secondary outlet for the smoke passage after the after it hits the normal chambers i don't know mm, okay. i don't know man i don't know Dang. Dang. we'll figure it out guys but go to rvd420.com that's the risk of live tv sometimes you think you're gonna open al capone's vault and sometimes you're not as excited with the results. That's it. Sometimes it happens. This not is, that that wasn't exciting. I just don't know what it is. I thought it was pretty exciting. I liked looking at that stuff. And I like showing this off. My Dude, letter that, opener. <laughs> it's like the most intense letter opener I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, dude. Uh, see y'all in Philly. See you guys in Philly. Uh, yes. Go to um, RVD's YouTube channel. Subscribe there. But, yeah, check out OnlyWrestlers.com. Check out 1TSport.com for that merch you see up there. You can scan that QR code, uh, get some RVD merch, get some Sabu merch. There's a lot of different guys on there that you can check out. And have a good time with representing. Uh, so there we go. Um, oh, yeah, check out my daily show, Rumor and Innuendo. I always forget to plug that. Uh, Monday through Friday at noon. Is there some Magnum TA merch? Yeah, there is Magnum TA merch and Greg Gagne merch too. too. Oh. So, yeah. We got oh. Fonzie merch. Oh, by oh. the way, Fonzie, me and Fonzie will be live tomorrow. I believe at 8.30 is the time tomorrow. Whoa. So be, uh, and we'll be back. Fonzie okay. will be back after all the hurricane stuff. So it'll be good to have him back in the mix again, too. So. Heck, um, heck, heck yeah. So it should be a fun week. Rob, looking forward to seeing you in Philly. And yeah, uh, everybody tune in. Tune in. And we'll see you next time here on One of a Kind with that guy over there, RVD. All right, guys. Thanks, Van Dam fam. See you guys. Thanks, Tom.